I drive an electric car, a Chevy Volt to be precise, and in countless conversations about it or electric cars in general, I'm inevitably forced to listen to, you know, your car is really just powered by coal, you're not being green at all. Well, yes, some of the power that goes into this car is created from coal-fired power plants, but that's only part of the picture. Come here, I want to show you something. That is a wind turbine, one of dozens here at this rural Illinois wind farm in Bureau County. These magnificent machines generate electricity simply from wind, moving air. Once they're built, they have virtually zero environmental impact, and we have green energy. Now, I'm not here to talk about the wind turbine. I'm sure you know what it is, and I'm sure you know what it does. I'm here today to talk about numbers. Wind turbines like these typically generate 1.5 megawatts. That's one and a half million watts. Now, they don't generate that amount of electricity all the time. They are dependent on how much the wind is blowing. But let's just assume that for one hour, this one wind turbine was able to generate its full one and a half megawatts. What sort of impact would that have on an electric car? Well, first of all, you need to understand how we measure electricity over time. To quantify an amount of power, we use the watt hour. The amount of electricity you use in your home is billed in kilowatt hours. One kilowatt hour is equivalent to using 1000 watts of electricity for one hour. The same number can be reached by using 500 watts for two hours, 2000 watts for a half hour, or 10,000 watts in six minutes. Take the number of kilowatts and multiply by the length of time in hours and you get kilowatt hours. Easy. If this single wind turbine is able to generate its full capacity for one hour, then it's generated 1.5 megawatt hours. Now, since we use the kilowatt hour, we'll go ahead and convert it back to 1500 kilowatt hours. From a depleted battery, the Chevrolet Volt requires about 11 and a half kilowatt hours to recharge. If you could take all the electricity being made by the wind turbine and send it into the Volt's battery safely, which you can't, then it would take less than 30 seconds to charge the vehicle from a depleted battery. We get that number by simply dividing 1500 by 11 and a half. That gives us about 130 for an answer, meaning that the wind turbine could charge 130 volts in an hour. Divide 60 minutes by 130 and we can see how quickly, in theory, it could charge a single volt. Now, being able to charge a single Chevy Volt in less than 30 seconds is certainly impressive, but let's think of that another way. If we charged all 130 volts that we could using this one wind turbine in one hour, then since they can all go about 38 miles on a full charge, they could collectively go 4,940 miles. Think about that. One wind turbine is able to propel these cars 5,000 miles in just one hour. That's crazy. Now that's an impressive number all by itself, but that's just for one wind turbine. And take a look around me, there's dozens here. The best count I've got is 72, but for simplicity's sake, let's go ahead and call it 100. Plus it'll count for any I've missed. In just one hour, if this wind farm was able to run at full capacity, it could charge 13,000 volts. That's crazy. Now, say over 24 hours, the wind farm was able to produce half its rated capacity. That's a little optimistic, but let's just use it for numbers sake. That would mean that in one day, this single wind farm can transport EV drivers 6 million miles. That's impressive. 6 million miles is a lot of miles, and that's from only one wind farm after only one day. Which begs the question, how many of these wind farms would we need if everyone drove electric cars? Well, it's a big number, but it's not nearly as big as you might think. Now, in order to figure that out, we need some statistics. According to the U.S. Census, in 2010, there were 71,203,000 commuters that had an average commute distance of 18.8 miles. We'll double that for a round-trip commute, and therefore we have a roughly 38-mile round trip, which is exactly the EV range of a Volt, probably not a coincidence. Anyway, the average electric car goes about 4 miles per kilowatt hour of electricity. How many kilowatt hours would be required to power 71 million electric cars for one day? Well, first, let's figure out how many miles that is. That's 2.7 billion miles. We'll divide that by four, and we discover that it would require 676 million kilowatt hours, or 676 gigawatt hours, if you like, for one day of American commuting. Wind farms today, on average, generate between 30 and 40 percent their maximum capacity. So our 1.5 megawatt wind turbine, which is 1,500 kilowatts, could in theory produce a maximum of 36,000 kilowatt hours. That's 1,500 kilowatt hours times 24 hours. But we have to multiply that by 0.35 to get a more realistic number. So on average, our 1.5 megawatt turbine generates 12,600 kilowatt hours per day. So how many of these wind turbines would we need to power everyone's commute? Well, we needed 676 million kilowatt hours of electricity. 
Since each one of these 1.5 megawatt wind turbines can produce about 12,600 kilowatt hours per day, well then divide 676 million by 12,600 and we get our answer. We would need 53,684 of these wind turbines. Now that may sound like a lot, but it's really not. Now consider that this wind farm has 72 turbines. If we had wind farms all across the country that had exactly 72 turbines, then we would only need 745 wind farms. And here's the real eye-opener. We're already almost there. According to the all-knowing Wikipedia, the U.S. currently has an installed wind capacity of 75,000 megawatts. That means there's already over 50,000 of these 1.5 megawatt wind turbines across the country. So with wind power alone, we can already provide more than 90% the electricity we need if everyone had an electric car. And I'll leave you with the final thing to consider. Wind farms like this currently only account for about 4.5% of the national U.S. electric consumption. And most of the power from these wind turbines is not going to charge electric cars. It's going to do the things we already do with electricity. But consider that with only 4.5% the capacity we currently have, we could charge 90% of everybody's cars if everyone had an electric car. That would mean that the grid would only need to increase by about 5% to power an entirely electric commuter fleet. And I think this represents the best case for electric cars. See, we don't really need to do much to our grid to get them online. And the other thing is, as fossil fuel fired power plants such as coal plants and natural gas disappear, and more wind farms like this and solar farms spring up across the country, well the grid gets cleaner and so does your car. Gasoline, well, it's always going to stay just as dirty. Couple of end notes. First of all, yes, I know just focusing on people who commute isn't nearly the whole story of our gas slash diesel use in transportation. There are trains, there are boats, and perhaps most important, there are trucks. I chose to only include cars in my statistics because it's easy to get stats for them, and I feel people can understand cars better because we in general have a more visceral relationship to them compared with other forms of transportation. And yes, I know there are plenty of reasons to drive besides commuting, but I would counter that some of those extra miles are offset by the fact that on Saturday and Sunday, when people generally aren't commuting, wind power is still going. We usually commute five days a week, but wind turbines work more than that. Before someone brings it up, yes, building an electric car takes more resources than a conventional car, particularly the rare earth metals used in the batteries and motors, and yes, this needs to be accounted for when comparing environmental impacts between electric and conventional cars. But I would ask that you take a look at the study in the description which examines the short-term manufacturing impact along with the long-term use impact of cars, and you'll find that over time electric cars have a smaller impact even with the electric grid as it currently exists. As fossil fuels leave our grid, as they are quickly doing, each and every electric car gets greener than it already is. And keep in mind that the rare earth materials in the batteries and motors can be recycled. Oil can only either be burned or spilled. Thanks for watching. Bye, wind farm. Thank you for providing green energy.